Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we are looking at Revengers starring Megalith, the ultimate man, number one collector's item issue from Continuity Comics and legendary Neil Adams. Like, did you guys even know about this? Um, I feel exactly the way I feel felt about this years ago when I first got it. I really, really wanted to love it. There's a lot to love. It's kind of crazy. Um, but this is what we're looking at today. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Wow. So I've been experiencing a lot of Superman analogs lately and some of the projects and dabbling and stuff I'm doing and uh, research and whatnot, whatever, to be, uh, uh, stay tuned for, you know, that info. But anyway, so Megalith just came up in my collection and I love Neil Adams art, of course. It's so interesting that um, I was like completely missed the boat on Neil Adams coming into comics like in the 80s. Um, you know, he had already done like all the great things that he did. And um, I just wasn't privy to like back issues and stuff like that. So I think the first time I really experienced him was a trade paperback of the uh, X-Men stuff. And of course, I fell in love, thought it was gorgeous, amazing, whatever. And when he did do continuity comic books, like I did start collecting it based on the art because it was gorgeous. But I just felt like the story left a little bit to be desired. And then um, just, I don't know if I quit or they quit. I don't remember how far any of this stuff went. But here we are looking at the first issue. And of course, this is, you know, his version of Superman. I do like the design. I mean, you can't discount the gorgeous Neil Adams art. Something slightly controversial perhaps about this is... Uh, writing layouts and inking by Neil Adams. Additional penciling work by staff assistant uh, Lofa Sobitici. I'm sorry, forgive me. Colored by Corey Adams. So a lot of people complain that, you know, at Continuity Comics, you know, Neil was working in a studio system. So it was, like, questionable how much of his actual work... Um, showed up on the page but I feel like with the first issues and especially the credits going for layouts and inking and additional penciling so he's like this additional penciling he's basically tightening up the pencils and then I guess Neil's coming in and doing inks it looks very much like Neil Adams so I mean I think it looks great you know we have this uh it's sort of weird like I this is such a strange story like he's like, they want him for the Olympics, but then he gets involved, he gets sold to Germans and Russians and his parents, I don't know, it's just very weird and just like, I don't know, a little political in a way and just, I don't know, I, I'm not super crazy about the story. And the other bitch I have is that I didn't like it then and I don't like it now for whatever reason, this sort of watercolor looking um, coloring. And in fairness, like, it was pretty cutting edge at the time. It was, at, like, high production value. Neil Adams is known for bringing a commercial art sensibility and bringing, like, a certain dynamic to comic books that had never seen be seen before with certain processes and things like that. So he's always been cutting edge in that way. So I do give him props for creating continuity and wanting to do, like, you know, they're a little more expensive, I think at a dollar, uh, yeah, two dollars. And, um you know, better paper and better, arguably better coloring. Um, but the story is just so weird. I don't know, like, he's trying to escape from these people who are, like, forcing him to sort of be their, um, you know, Olympian. Um, and in a way, like, I, you know, because uh, here's the thing with Neil Adams. Like, I, I, I don't think he's a terrible writer, but I think he writes for himself too much. Like, it is crazy. Like, I feel like Batman Odyssey and, like, certain miniseries and stuff like that were just, like, so crazy and all over the place and introducing these sort of, I don't know, esoteric or metaphysical ideas that I feel like he kind of had. And um, so I feel like, you know, this character is just getting his power just by, like, unlocking something in his mind. Like, it's not made super clear at first. But damn, this art is gorgeous in a lot of places, isn't it? I mean, Neil draws just such great faces and beautiful line work, and you got to appreciate something like this. And hopefully, I mean, if he is doing, you know, layouts and inking, I mean, this is a lot of Neil in this first issue. I don't know how it went, but here's what I'm saying, like the link up. So he's like, he looks stronger than he should be, although he's lifting a lot. I don't know. Like I said, the writing isn't super strong and solid in here. 
And then the most triggering part for me was when they shot his dog. I almost just like ripped the bug in half and threw it because I cannot stand that when, especially, I like I get it. Like it's such a trope of storytelling, like way to prove a point or whatever. And just, oh, I hated them. But they are. Do you see? As much as I bitched about the coloring, though, like it looks really cool on this page. So I don't know, but I just feel like. His first goal was a true mental control of his body, trial and error, you know, brought him. So is this, you know, like he achieved the link up. So is that sort of like, is this sort of like, you know, saying like it's in us and we can unlock it through, I don't know, meditation or something like that. I mean, that looks pretty heavy, right? Just for a normal person to be lifting. So I feel like we don't a hundred percent know what's going on. And, you know, it's a little choppy. Like I said, um, He's not a bad writer. I feel like he's an okay writer, but it just, some of it doesn't make sense, especially like they, you know, he's been on this long flight and then they put him in a helicopter. He's going to help to get his parents, but why would he have the presence of mind? Like who gave him this costume? We have no idea. Like why did they have that? Suddenly he has a superhero costume for no reason with an M on it, um, you know, allegedly like his name Megalev, but he hasn't been called that yet. So I don't know what's really going on, but I don't know. Like I said, it's just pretty. And I don't think I got issue two. I don't know. Megalev is hot. So that's fine too. I can take that. And that's a gorgeous picture right there. I love that. But I mean, who doesn't love Neil Adams hard, but, and I do have more coming up. I think I have Sam Marie. Um, and I don't know, probably not too much else. Um, because I wasn't in love with continuity comics. I mean, sometimes I feel like, you know, with Image and uh, this and, like, other things, it's like a lot of publishers try to do their own version of comic books. And sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's just making you want the original. And then we have this backup story. Um, see, once again, so writing and inking Neil Adams, penciling Will Junkunts, but it's, it could just as well be Neil Adams, right? As far as like the people he's working with, the people in his studio. So he's obviously going for Aho's look. Um, and this is Crazy Man. Remember Crazy Man? I mean, that's actually pretty cool. But I don't know, this coloring is just like uh, kind of uh, jarring in a lot of ways, to be honest with you. And that's a lot coming from me because if you know my color palette, it's beyond insane, so. I don't know. I think it's just, I don't know. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. How do you guys feel about it? I mean, it looks pretty good, but I don't know. Anyway, Bucky O'Hare, Zero Patrol. Very interesting, right? Megalith, The Ultimate Man by Neil Adams. Kind of cool, kind of crazy. Um, definitely wor noteworthy moment in Neil's history of publication. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button, and I'll bring you more soon.